We're back again, Faneuil Hall, talking about repeated shapes. We've done the foundation for this painting. Now we're adding details. You can see the repeated shapes pretty clearly in the tabletops and the figures. The planters to the left, shapes of dappled shadows. We're embellishing these now and uh, bringing more attention, more action to the, the figures, especially these two that were, or this, this group, I should say, that we're working on now. Uh, legs and uh, tables, I'm sorry, legs for the chairs, legs for the table, for our chess players. These uh, figures in the foreground are important, but we don't want them to take too much attention. I'm putting them primarily in shadow. I'm going to be painting some darker colors into them and um, trying to blend them into the scene, which is a, a challenge because if you bring, if you uh, give too much bright color, sharp edges, contrast uh, to these figures, it ends up being a distraction uh, for the whole picture, for the big picture, and that's something I want to avoid. I, st I want them to be recognizable as a, I guess, a father and a daughter. They're playing chess as well, and um, but they're largely in shadow. So they're, the contrast between these figures and their surroundings is going to be a little less, but uh, when the viewer looks to this part of the painting, they're going to be able to recognize two figures sitting at a table um, with shadows falling over them and they're they're playing chess. There's a figure in the upper right hand corner as well and the same sort of logic applies to this that figure which is yes we want them to be present and seen but more as a chorus or as a background uh, to the main figures. Very often the artist thinks like a a director or a producer of a theater in that we'll adjust our lighting, our, our focal point to the main characters who are telling the story or who are showing the action that we want to show. And there will be other figures and there'll be other characters, but they will be as a chorus or as a accompaniment to the main figures. As I develop the image, I'm placing shadows on some figures. I'm placing um, these guys are even going to need a little bit of a face, um, or at least some sunglasses or a feeling of hair or something, because they're large uh, in relation to the painting. There's um, there's a sort of a necessity to put some details there. Plus you can you can make them have more character, more you can have them be more fun, more entertaining, or more pertinent to the story you're trying to tell. This guy looks like he's about to checkmate his friend. He's holding his hand as if intimidating his opponent, saying, Look at I'm about to place my Peace in a position where you will be unable to recover. He's being dramatic. And there's a sort of, um, I feel, a strong interest in that because these three figures are looking down, the seated figure is looking up, even those two distant figures are looking towards these main characters as if something is about to happen. Uh, to give a feeling of overhead, of overhead light, I'm adding a little bit of a highlight to the hat, the head, the shoulders, sometimes the, the hand. Uh, this is um, transparent white. It's placed on the, the top part of the figure. As a last detail, I'm adding a reference to the pavers that uh, form the ground around Faneuil Hall Marketplace. And uh, we do that. This helps to create a, a feeling of perspective as well as to make these shadows that were painted early on feel transparent. And uh, I'm feeling that this, uh, these figures here are taking a little 
too much attention, so I'm taking a wet brush and, and blurring them a little bit, blending them into the lower left corner. Here's the, uh, well, this is, here's the finished piece, and uh, you can see that um, I, I blended the lower section. They're a little more mysterious. I blended some of the bright, sh bright shadows on the planter, and the focus goes clearly the figures. This is another version, dark figures against light.